Much has been written about Haushofer's impact on Hitler's thinking, and there is still disagreement today. But as an indication of Haushofer's close association with the Nazi regime, it's worth pointing out that Rudolf Hess, the deputy Führer, was one of Haushofer's students, and indeed, Haushofer was one of the two best men at Hess's wedding to Inge Prohl, the other man being Adolf Hitler. During the Second World War, Writers in the US and the UK saw the intellectual underpinnings of the Nazi geopolitical vision, insofar as the Nazi movement had intellectual underpinnings, as being directed entirely by Karl Haushofer. Bowman believed that Haushofer personified German geopolitics, and the Second World War itself was the result of German political and philosophical thinking and ambition for 200 years. Remember, though, that it's not Karl Haushofer, but Rudolf Kjellen, who coined the term geopolitics in 1899, drawing on the work of his mentor, Theodor Ratzel. Haushofer himself was never entirely happy with the word geopolitics, and he toyed around with some alternatives, like in 1916, when he tried Erdmachtkunde. Now, think back to Sprout and Sprout, and the five frameworks for the relationship between humans and the environment, which were environmental determinism, in which the environment controls our actions, free will environmentalism, in which the environment influences our actions, environmental possibilism, where the things we do are shaped by our environment, Cognitive behaviourism, in which our decisions are based on how we perceive our environment. And finally, fifth, environmental probabilism, in which we make inferences based on past events. For Haushofer, geopolitics was a mixture of determinism and human agency, and indeed the ratio between the two could be measured. Geography determined perhaps 25% of politics, leaving the other 75% in which there was room for human agency. So Haushofer himself was not falling straight into the simple environmental determinism camp. His worldview was perhaps more of a mixture of free will environmentalism and environmental possibilism. What geopolitics would do in practice then would be to provide tools and guidance for political action. One way in which it provided such tools and guidance was in extending the notion of Lebensraum, originally present in the work of Ratzel and developed by his student Kellen. If a state is an organism, then it needs living space. To give itself some living space, a state therefore could create an empire, expand peacefully, or if needs be, engage in just wars. So this is where we find the bridge between the academic and the political, a dangerous intersection which many academics, myself included, try to avoid. As Hervig tells us, while in theory the term Lebensraum may be geographic and academic, in practice it constitutes an operational political military device. Above all, the attractiveness of the concept for both its inventors and its practitioners is that it lent pseudo-scientific character to outright greed and conquest. But of course, Haushofer wasn't just slavishly modelling his geography on, on Ratzel and Kjellin. As Kahneman pointed out during the war, Haushofer refers to many English and American authors, including uh, Sir Halford Mackinder, once director of the London School of Economics and Political Science, Brooks Adams, Turner, Mahan and Bowman. But the wartime office of the uh, US Chief of Council takes a more uncompromising position. Writing at the end of the war, the office states, Haushofer was Hitler's intellectual godfather. It was Haushofer, rather than Hess, who wrote Mein Kampf. Geopolitics was not merely academic theory, it was a driving, dynamic plan for the conquest of the heartland of Eurasia and for domination of the world. Earlier during the war, the uh, Reader's Digest, which we'll come back to actually, uh, in 1941, claimed that Haushofer ran an institute for geopolitics, staffed by a thousand people, driving Hitler's agenda. Kahneman tells us that Haushofer keeps in his geopolitical institute a file on almost everything and everybody in every country and in every part of every country on the face of this globe. Mm. 
More recent authors suggest that perhaps Haushofer's role has been overstated, claiming that the weight of evidence suggests that Hitler's worldview was well formed before he ever met Haushofer. Natter goes on to argue that Hitler cherry-picked the parts of Haushofer's theories that he liked, and that wasn't just the case with Haushofer. As with so many others who thought they could become the master teacher of Hitler, Heidegger, Schmidt, Haushofer learned instead that national socialist reality was one in which Hitler would use the thought of others as it suited him, period. Haushofer himself denied that he was the driving influence behind Nazi expansionism. The Nazis closed down his journal Zeitschrift für Geopolitik. In December 1944, his son Albrecht, also a geographer and a Nazi resistor who'd been hiding in a farm in Bavaria, was arrested and sent to Morbid prison in Berlin. On the 23rd of April 1945, when Red Army troops had already stormed Berlin, the SS shot Albrecht dead. So, how are we to interpret Haushofer? Hesker makes a suggestion. We must hold Haushofer responsible to a large degree for promulgating and supporting the inhuman Nazi ideology and policies and for his intellectual groundwork in preparing the German populace for a cruel imperialistic war. For Troll, the tragedy of geopolitics was also the tragedy of the Haushofer, Haushofer family. Karl's son Ab Albrecht had tried to forge a new geography, more closely linked with the physical, as he'd seen the catastrophe of the fatherland approaching with clarity, but this ultimately cost him his life. Less than a year later, Karl and his wife Martha Mayer Doss killed themselves. In some ways, we can see the Haushofer tragedy as emblematic of the dangers of academic work becoming too closely embroiled with foreign policy, especially when that policy is associated with expansionism. Mixing theory with ideology is usually not a good idea. Sadly, as we'll see in the next session, this problem was not just confined to Germany. <laughs>